What you're about to see are lessons bought at a high and awful price. They are meant to keep you alive, safe, and should you ever need them, they are the lessons meant to guide you and your loved ones through the worst day of your life. My name is Christopher Allen Smith. Until November 8, 2018, this was my home in Paradise, California. It's where my wife and I raised our two boys, and it was from here we fled as the campfire tore into our town. The disaster displaced over 52,000 people from Concow, Megillia, Paradise, Yankee Hill, and other parts of the Paradise Ridge. And it killed 85 of our friends and neighbors. These lessons saved us. Many were learned from previous disasters and passed on by first responders, government officials, and ordinary citizens wanting to help. Some are new, because now it's our turn to pass on what we learned. While our disaster was fire, these are meant to help you and yours survive disasters of all kinds. They're for everyone, civilians and first responders, risk managers in the private sector, and disaster planners at every level of government, from town councils to national capitals. It's all here for everyone, because the first step in preparing is to know as much as you can. You know, we knew as fire service professionals that Paradise was susceptible to fire. I mean, Paradise is a geographic plateau, sits in the foothills of Northern California in a Mediterranean climate. It's got a timbered forest, overstory forest. It's surrounded by, by this, the very deep and steep canyon in the west, Butte Creek Canyon, and, and also to the east by the uh, west branch of the North Fork, another very, very steep and narrow canyon, actually. It's the epitome of an urban interfaced area. And then it's always been talked about of the potential of something catastrophic happening to, to that entire general area. And here is the first lesson. Do not live in fear, but accept there is a real chance a disaster will happen to you. Right now, you may be thinking, it can happen to you, but you don't really feel it. Nothing this big ever happens to you. But take it from me, it happens. This is a list of common disasters, based on one maintained by the Red Cross. Now, maybe there's never been a tornado where you live, but what about a chemical train derailment? an earthquake, a mass shooting. Chances for any one of these is small. But the more things happen, you will encounter at least something on this list. Now is not the time to panic. Now is the time to prepare. Hurricanes are named after people. Earthquakes tend to be named after years. Fires I've come to learn in the last year, are named after places. This is Camp Creek Road. It's the closest geological feature to where the campfire started. But this is not the campfire you're thinking of. Fire um, is driven by three predominant fire behavior factors. Topography, fuels, and weather. When I talk about fuels, we predominantly talk about forest fuels, grass, brush, and timber. But fuel is anything that burns. It could be a vehicle, it could be a structure. We as CAL FIRE have used um, varying scenarios in many of our classes, including our Operations Section Chief class in Paradise uh, fire scenario where a fire would burn from one of those drainages up into town was, was certainly one of the scenarios. The biggest fire in the history of Butte County started here, and it was called the Camp Fire. But you've probably never heard of it. That's because it started in 2008 and was one of many fires which burned through the county that summer. So many, in fact, the collection was given a new name, the Lightning Complex. Well, for a number of years, um, I was actually the disaster coordinator for the school district. So back in 2008, I was the district's representative in the EOC. And so I spent several days uh, in the EOC working with uh, town officials, fire officials, Marcus is talking about something every level of government should have. It's called an Emergency Operations Center, or EOC. This is Butte County's EOC. It allows disaster responders to concentrate information, efforts, and communication when the chaos of a disaster strikes. It makes responses immensely more efficient. In Butte County, it works like this. 
When a disaster strikes, the county opens the EOC, the Butte County Sheriff opens their Incident Command Center, and CAL FIRE opens their Incident Command Center. Firefighters put out the fire, law enforcement evacuates areas in danger, and the county opens shelters and gets resources from within the county, from other counties, from the state, or the federal government, depending on the scale of the disaster. You know, it's, it's a pretty amazing process. People ask me, what's it like? I say it's kind of like being in a war room, plotting evacuations, uh, obtaining current information, trying to make projections about direction of uh, fire uh, impacts. Over the course of five weeks, the Lightning Complex fire burned 88,000 acres. Earlier that summer, another fire, the Humboldt Fire, burned 24,000 acres, destroyed 74 structures, and prompted the evacuation of most of Paradise. That evacuation resulted in people stuck on narrow, wooded roads for as much as 12 hours. While no one was killed, the 2008 Summer of Fire struck many observers as a bullet very narrowly dodged. In the years that followed, first responders, local and state officials, and civilians from every corner of the county came together to create plans and make changes so the next time the Paradise Ridge faced a fire, things would go better. I would say that the 08 fires definitely laid the foundation for the way that the county has responded to future disasters. We learned a lot in 2008. Many of our foothill communities have very limited ingress and egress. For instance, Paradise has, as we know, four routes out to the west and south from town, and one route to the north that at the time did not go all the way through. And then other communities have only one way in and one way out. And we knew, we always know that those communities are vulnerable. The population density in Paradise, obviously 26,500 people at the time of the fire, roughly, and in Megalia, another 11 to 13,000 people. When you put that many people on very limited roadways, um, traffic is going to back up and it's going to get jammed. And I think one of the biggest things that we learned is the understanding and the need to maximize our ability to use what limited traffic lanes that we have out of a community to maximize the flow. That's where they ended up developing zones. Maybe the best program disaster planners made famous after the 2008 fires were the evacuation zones. The town, county, Cal Fire and the Sheriff revamped and widely publicized evacuation zones for Paradise, Megillia, and Concow. There's 14 in the town of Paradise, and the zones in Paradise are numbered, and the zones in Megillia and, and elsewhere in the county are geographically labeled. Evacuation zones work like this. Citizens sign up for a notification system and learn their zone. Mine was 11. When the disaster hits, automatic calls go out informing citizens if their zone got an evacuation warning, making them aware of the danger, giving them the chance to pack up and get ready to go, or an evacuation order. That way, people truly at threat would get on the road and get out while those safe from danger could stay at home or work and keep the streets free. I think probably one of the most significant uh, things that was done uh, was the paving of the roadway from Inskip over to Butte Meadows, uh, up Skyway and Inskip over to Butte Meadows. And you'll, you may recall that there was a significant effort to get that roadway paved, uh, the primary impetus being that it would be an alternate route uh, to evacuate people. Another improvement was a major upgrade to the emergency mass notification system, the system county and town officials use to let citizens know of danger. That it was a dial-up system and we quickly moved to a web-based system where more calls could be made. There was a significant emphasis on training, preparation, uh, making sure we had adequate plans and facilities for how we were going to address the, any sort of disaster, whether it be flooding or a fire um, or an earthquake, anything like that. The community evacuation plans, they've been updated a couple of times since then. The town especially has done a lot of work on one-way evacuations, contraflow, you know, turning a two-lane, going in opposite directions into one way, both lanes going the same direction to get people out. We, we have a registry in Butte County, the Special Needs Awareness Program, SNAP, 
and that registry took a dramatic change after the 2008 fires and the Disaster Preparedness Committee met with local law and fire folks and said, what do you need to know? And the answer was we need people who need extra help evacuating folks that are wheelchair users or maybe bed bound or particularly frail. People can go online and either register online or there's a phone number they can call. It's not a guarantee of being evacuated, but it does help give people some some planning measures. And we changed the Town of Paradise and Upper Ridge evacuation plan to follow the national Ready, Set, Go format. Ready being things to do to be ready before the fire season hits. Defensible space, a home evacuation plan, um, getting your go bag together, all of those things that one should do in the spring before the summer sets in. The next part was the get set. Get set is just that. It's sort of like being on deck in the batter's box. Hey, there's a fire that's near me, it's not necessarily impacting me now, but I gotta get my last minute things together. I gotta get the go bag, I gotta grab my medicines. I've got to um, make sure that I have my pets and, and their resources and their go bag and those kinds of things and collect those and get them ready. And then of course the go is just that. That's when you receive official notification or it becomes obvious and I think that's the thing that people need to realize. First responders and, and law enforcement is a lead agency when it comes to evacuation. First responders working with law enforcement will do everything we can to notify people but sometimes there are going to be events that develop so rapidly that there isn't time or systems go down, infrastructure goes down and we're not able to notify everybody and that's a, in essence a no notice event. A no notice event. That's a polite phrase for what separates an emergency from a disaster. Emergencies can be handled. Disasters cannot, at least for a while. A no-notice event did come to Butte County. 18 months before the fire, a tear opened in the spillway of the Oroville Dam after especially heavy rains. Concerned with the reservoir's water levels as the rains continued, officials decided to let water over the emergency dirt spillway, and it began to erode. It was head cutting back towards the face of the emergency spillway. If the spillway was undermined and gave way, uh, we were looking at the potential of a 30-foot high wall of water, uh, about 1,300 feet long, cascading down the side of the mountain, taking with it everything in its path, and then it would continue to flow that way until the top 30 feet of the lake had drained off. And when I asked them um, to explain to me again how fast it was moving, they said 30 feet an hour. And I said, well, how close is it? And they said, we think it's about 30 feet away. Oroville was evacuated, and over 100,000 people were in danger, from Butte County all the way to Sacramento. I believe that our experiences with the Oroville Dam spillway evacuation informed and guided our response to the campfire evacuation. The plans worked. Tens of thousands had been evacuated without the loss of a single life. I, I, I would say if you spoke to me on November 7th, I would have said, you know what, we have a good plan in place. We, we plan for uh, different events. Uh, I felt that we have a good response plan. It's all scripted. Uh, un unfortunately, that all went out the window on November 8th. Which brings us to this. As a citizen, you've thought about your family's needs, medical concerns, pets, and what you should pack. You know your evacuation zone. As a disaster agency, you've gotten your EOC ready, made plans, backup plans, and alternates. You've trained your employees and bought the gear first responders will need. But somewhere in your disaster plan should be this sentence. There is a very real chance you will need to ignore your disaster plan. Take it from me, that's not as scary as it sounds. <laughs>